Okay, let's call the meeting to order. We'll start with roll call. Ms. Cooper Payton. Ms. Harrell is excused. Ms. Hetland. Present. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Ms. Jones. Ms. Orcherton. Here. Mr. Patterson is no longer with us. Ms. Salmon. Here. And Ms. Snyder. Here. Okay. Uh, next, we need to uh, approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Anybody have any questions or comments on those notes? If not, I move that we approve. Oh, I'm second. Oh, second. Oh, okay. You're seconding. Okay. And all in favor of approval? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to move to the staff report. Rachel, you're up. <laughs> Well, good evening. You made it out on a rainy day. <laughs> um, this is your July Public Arts Coordinator Report. Um, I'm going to begin with a few updates. Um, first and foremost, we are officially launching our next series. This is um, our Open Scene Open Mic series. Um, this is We've been talking about this, but this is um, kind of a continuation of our National Endowment of the Arts sponsored um, four weekend intensives, but it's taking a new shape as to open mics that are popping up in the downtown area throughout the summer, and we've actually got dates leading um, through September right now Great. scheduled. So um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update about that. Um, first and foremost, our, um, we kick it off tomorrow evening, and this is 5.30 to 7.30 at Cunningham Township's Community Garden. Um, these are intended to be um, open in terms of the creative sectors that are represented as well. So we invite poetry, music, art, performance, storytelling, song, and the list goes on. Um, we have a few people already predetermined as having some, uh, so we do some signups in advance and then there's a, a, a way to sign up when you arrive. Um, tomorrow's is going to be particularly special. We set up a sign-up sheet for the participants in Cunningham Township's programs. So we do have a number of participants who signed up to perform. Um, and we're also excited that tomorrow will be a barbecue. Um, to that end, uh, I'm also asking public arts commissioners to consider not only attending, but whether or not you might be able to offer a dish to pass or um, support in setup or cleanup of that event or any of the following open scene open mics. Um, tomorrow's has some particular setup and cleanup needs compared to some of the others. Um, but we're really excited about it and hope that you'll be involved. So before um, we leave, I'm going to just pass around a sign up and interest sheet. Um, and I'll, I'll do that after the staff report and you can sign up if you're interested. Um, following tomorrow's, which is of course July 11th, um, and I should mention that this is hosted by Shea Robinson. She's a local poet and the director of Speak Cafe. Um, which is a, a monthly open mic night um, that features spoken word out of Cranford Art Museum. And it's going to have a performance by Sora Rise, which is a musician um, who actually um, by day is Emily McQuown, and she works at Cunningham Township as well. She's an intern, and she's actually been the curator of the garden where we're having this event. Um, open Scene Open Mic is sponsored by both the um, City of Urbana's Public Arts Program and the Urbana-Champaign Independent Media Center. Uh, following our July 11th date, we'll have um, July 30th at Blackbird with host Dominique Arnold, and it will feature music um, by DJ Terrence of Dance Music Therapy. We're going to then follow that up with August 8th at 25 o'clock Brewing Company from, this is a different time, 6.30 to 8.30. This one's a little bit later. Um, to accompany 25 o'clock schedule. Um, and that's with um, Jim O'Brien, whose pen name is James Usher. And he's going to do something called Poetry Karaoke, uh, which is exactly as it sounds. You get to kind of look through his karaoke books and pick out a poem and then do a dramatic reading of that poem at the mic, and it's pretty fun. This um, is an annual event through CU Poetry Group, so they're also going to be co-sponsoring this one out at 25 o'clock. Then we'll have Abdullah Aziz um, with Common Ground Food Co-op and a performance likely um, by some of the com Common Ground staff who are also musicians. This one um, we're hoping will feature live painting. Some of the details are still getting worked out, but they have, um, we've invited their artists that have exhibited as part of their art exhibition series at the co-op to come and do some live painting if they'd like to, and there'll be some music and um, some goodies from Common Ground. 
on September 6th in Boneyard Creek Crossing. We're going to have a story slam with storyteller Don Blackman leading and we will also have Coop Adventure Play doing one of their neighborhood pop-ups at the Boneyard Creek um, that night. Um, so there'll be some family-friendly activities, and that's true of all of these um, with, you know, um, maybe only the exception of the bars. We really try to have this be as, mu as much of a family-friendly atmosphere as possible. So like tomorrow's, for instance, has face painting and bubbles and art stations for the kids. So we're going to have that out at Boneyard Creek Crossing as well. And then the last one we have scheduled right now is on September 26th um, with uh, host Kate and Solia at Urbana Dance Company, her new dance studio that's opened up on Main Street. And that'll be 5.30 to 7.30 and we'll um, really focus on a performance showcase, but we'll have a variety of artistic genres represented again. So that's the schedule, and I wanted to kind of give, make you aware of Open Scene, Open Mic, um, and invite you as commissioners and anyone listening and from the public to get involved um, in that series, whether it's through performing or volunteering or being a part. Um, you have the whole schedule in your report. Our Art Now this month features, um, again, Jim O'Brien. Um, so he is not only hosting one of our open scenes coming up, but he's the feature right now on every episode airing this month of Art Now. Um, you may know him as a poet who does poetry on tap, um, which means that you can walk up to him and have a poem made for you instantaneously from him. Um, and he goes out to various events and offers that in, in Urbana, frequently at Sipyard, so you can see a lot of the photos that um, we have of him come from Sipyard as well. Um, I should mention that our, um, our episodes are, are having a time change very slightly, so our episodes used to air at 6 p.m., and um, going forward, they're now airing at 6.15 um, every Monday night on UPTV, and then reruns every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Um, they're also available on YouTube, and we have another very fun development about Art Now. Um, we are uh, successfully turning Art Now into a radio spot um, and podcast. So we're going to be able to have um, it air on local radio stations. So um, I've reached out to a couple of different local stations who at this point will remain nameless, but I'm sure you can guess who they are, mm -hmm. to ask if they'd like to have the show as a radio um, episode um, that will also invite people to check it out on, on the video version on UPTV. Mm -hmm. um, so we're awaiting confirmation, but it seems very, very likely and very positive. Um, the other thing that we've done is we've been able to verify that um, Smile Politely um, arts editors are taking on art now as um, a regular monthly highlight and so they're going to be cool. writing a feature that goes with the episode that is airing and cool. highlighting that artist that will also link to the episode to encourage more views on our YouTube channel. Cool. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, Next, I have an update about Artists of the Corridor. Our current exhibition on display, which um, just finished being hung about two hours ago, is Scenes of Downtown by Christopher Evans. It's a collection of illustrated works exploring downtown Urbana and its people in a wide variety of settings from cafes to public parks, music venues to markets. Um, this is from the artist, but the artist sketches um, the life around him as he sits in a coffee shop, a tavern, or listens to live music, and every attempt is made to present the facts as they present themselves, letting the scene express whatever beauty there might be in ordinary life. Um, so what we really enjoy about this exhibit, of course, is that this is a capturing of the uniqueness of downtown Urbana. All of the scenes come here from downtown Urbana. Um, and you might recognize uh, some of the work, including this image um, that's behind the, the, the lettering here, because this is a portrait of Chick McNeil by um, Chris Evans, and this is also our Murals on Glass selected works of 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. and is currently on display large on our parking deck in downtown Urbana. Um, our, our next um, art exhibition is still being um, worked out, but some upcoming artists include um, Judy Spencer and, again, our staff show. So we had originally talked about a staff show from the City of Urbana staff and the Urbana Free Library for September. Instead, we're looking to do an exhibit that is in conjunction with Welcome Week, Immigrant Welcome Week in our area, and then to push that staff show back to November so you have a little bit more time. Commissioners, if you want to submit something, I'll say you're probably invited. So, <laughs> so do be thinking about what artwork you might want to submit to a show we're calling After Hours of Staff Artworks. Um, we do have an upcoming reception that's on July 18th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. at the City of Urbana Main Lobby. Um, and this exhibit is up through the end of August. On August 30th, we have our um, closing reception at the library, and the times are to be confirmed. Here's a picture of Chris Evans and what I had just mentioned, his murals on glass mural. 
I like this picture. <laughs> yeah, that's good. that was cute. Um, Art at the Market update. So in partnership with Urbana's Market at the Square, um, we have once again our Art at the Market continuing every second Saturday of the month. Um, this one coming up here on Saturday will feature um, Papel Picado, a Mexican folk art craft guided by the staff of La Casa Cultural Latina and the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies. And then from 9.30 to 11.30 you can enjoy a musical performance from Jean-René Beliquita and Bonamoy, an ensemble with extensive repertoire of traditional hymns of African music and flavors of gospel gospel, jazz, and Congolese rumba. Um, Bomoyi means life in the native language of Lingala. Our Young Artist Studio will also take place this weekend on Sunday um, at 3 p.m. and this is watercolor resist painting. Um, Contrary to a question we received about this, this isn't about teaching youth to be resistant to watercolor. <laughs> this is actually about using wax crayons or um, other kinds of um, drawing to draw on the paper and then the watercolor <laughs> resists it and it creates an image. So it. we're very excited to continue <laughs> trying out different things with our Young Artist Studio. Briefly, I'll mention that um, our, our following one in, and this should actually read, excuse me, um, August. Our August Young Artist Studio will feature Sierra Murphy making stained glass kites and then um, local artist Mark Enslin will do a puppet making workshop in September. Um, next I want to just briefly mention um, we had partnered with Illinois Shakespeare Festival to offer a theater for young audiences production of Double Double, a new play by author Nancy Steele Brokaw that reveals and celebrates the connections between young Abraham Lincoln and uh, the writings of William Shakespeare. Um, unfortunately, due to inclement weather, we had to cancel this performance, um, but we are working together with Illinois Shakespeare Festival to find a later date this summer to bring them to do that theater for young art audiences performance. And this is funded through a grant that they received, so they're <coughs> doing this tour and had to cancel, unfortunately, ours and Peoria's. Um, so they're going to try to do that tour again and coordinate with all of us. So I'll have an update later um, next month, hopefully, about that. Other big news, Urbana Sculpture Project um, continues. We selected two sculptures for installation in Urbana, and these are um, Races by Bobby Joe Schribner. And, um, and here's, here you can see that sculpture. Um, one of the reasons why we were excited about this one was because of the um, connection to the Illinois Marathon that this evokes. So we're hoping to find a place along the marathon route here in Urbana to install this sculpture. Um, but we'll be doing some, some research and bringing some options to the commission and, and talking about that next month. Um, and then the other one is Ice Pops, um, and this is by Craig Gray. It'll be traveling here from Key West, Florida. Um, and this playful sculpture we hope to put in, um, in the area of the Bonier Creek crossing, um, similar to where we had a thirst, if you recall that from mm -hmm. previous mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. um, Ice Pops, uh, and this has support both from um, Mike Kozier, who is, is likely to help sponsor this one, sure. as well as um, some of the uh, owners of nearby, nearby businesses um, are very excited about having this one there. So, um, so we're excited about what that will offer towards events like Urbana Celebrates the Boneyard or other things that we have going on down there in the, in the Boneyard Creek. Um, we did have a sculpture unveiling. It took place on June 28th at Art Martin Champaign, and there was quite a number of different sculptures that have been selected for the Urbana Champaign area. So as they continue to seek sponsors and announce who's sponsoring each, I'll bring that information here for us all to be aware of. Our Urbana Art Expo is scheduled for September 15th and 16th of 2018 um, from 10 to 5 p.m. Um, this takes place, of course, at our Urbana Civic Center. Um, it's, a, it's really wonderful news this year that we're able to have this for two days instead of one. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, both Pat Salmon and Jessica Schneider have ad agreed to serve on that committee, so we're excited to have the two of you. Um, and what we are um, prepared for at this point is releasing the application this week. Um, so we invite uh, everyone here to help us get the word out. We're going to be seeking around 20 artists to um, have their work selected through a jury for exhibition and sale through this art expo and we're really wanting to see a diversity of style and of um, artistic representation so we'll send all of that out and hope to get it circulated widely. We are seeking of course volunteers to assist with day of support. Um, those interested in volunteering should get in touch with me. And then lastly I just want to mention a couple of more things. One is our social media marketing. Um, we've seen an increase on both Facebook and Twitter usage 
Um, a substantial increase from Facebook, I can say, was largely due to me discovering that there's a button to invite all of your personal friends to like. <laughs> And not just like individually invite them, like there's a button that says send a message to every one of your personal friends. So you're welcome to do that if you too would like to support the Urbana Public Arts Program's social media presence. Um, and our Instagram increased by 103 people since last month, so that's been really exciting. Twitter, on the other hand, um, is uh, still trailing a little bit behind, but we're seeing people use that a little bit less. And last but not least, not of course not least whatsoever, we've got a new public arts intern. So Deborah Ogoye joins the staff of the Urbana Public Arts Program. I want to welcome her because she's here with us tonight, <laughs> Deborah. Um, and she brings a strong attention to project management, website design, entrepreneurship, marketing, and programs. She has a passion for the arts with a special interest in videography and photography. She's a junior in the College of Business at the University of Illinois. Um, she's going to be assisting us with special events and marketing efforts aimed at promoting the Urbana Public Arts Program. Now, I'm really excited to welcome Deborah, and I hope that each of you get to know her over the course of the next few months that she's working with us. And um, I'll be hopefully facilitating those introductions as much as possible, but please reach out as well. Um, I continue to work with the Community Learning Lab, so we may have some other volunteers, especially as the school year approaches, or some other interns, and our volunteer program continues to seek volunteers. Um, but that is your July report. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, next we're going to have grant presentations. Uh, our first one is Christina Carpio from the Asian American Cultural Center. Hi. Okay. Hello. Hi, welcome. Hi, my name is Christina Carpio, and I currently serve as the acting director of the Asian American Cultural Center. Um, I'll be presenting a summary of our event, um, Asian Pacific Mil uh, Islander Desi American Heritage Month, our Asia Fest celebration. Um, so I'll start with a little bit about the Asian American Cultural Center. If you're not familiar with what we do, um, we promote cross-cultural understanding of Asian American and Asian international experiences, and we provide educational and cultural support for Asians and Asian Americans in our university community. Um, our APITA Heritage Month allows us to actively pursue our mission statement, which is to promote um, cross-cultural understanding of Asian and Asian American experiences. Um, Asia Fest is our biggest celebration and event of the year. We engage with community and outreach to many different organizations, both on university and um, the community, um, to spread education about our culture. Specifically, this funding has allowed us to support and empower our communities Asian American Pacific Islander performers' artistic development through small honoraria. Not only were they able to share their piece of Asian and Asian American heritage to attendees, but they are now able to invest in developing their art for more widespread exposure in the community. Um, this funding has also allowed us to have this um, event free to all of our guests. Uh, this year we had four professional staff, 11 interns, and three um, planning committees, 40 student volunteers, and three um, volunteers uh, that all helped make this event a success. Um, this year we started uh, marketing to the community through different strategies. So we used Facebook marketing to, mark, to target our location on specifically Champaign-Urbana um, community members. And we also um, tapped into the Shambana Moms <laughs> social media platform, which I'm not sure if you know, is a very popular website oh, yeah. for you know, <laughs> families in the community. Um, so this year we had a bunch of different organizations, both community and student organizations, who held different cultural and um, interactive booths uh, that supported Asian art, such as origami, calligraphy, uh, coloring Asian lanterns, um, henna tattoos, and we also learned about a South Asian game called Karam. Um, the goal of all participating organizations was to build stronger bonds within the Urbana community as well as showcase the rich APITA diversity that exists in our campus um, and community. 
um, food were, was prepared and made by organizations such as Indian Graduate Asso Students Association. They created Belpuri. We had um, a drink called Otai from uh, Western Polynesian um, culture. And then we also had Thai trivia along with Thai milk tea um, that, that guests were able to purchase for $1. <laughs> um, activities included a Bollywood Bangro workshop um, up in the left hand corner. So that was a pretty fun event because it was open to all and we had children and women of all ages um, and even men all dancing to Bollywood. Um, Bollywood music and learning the steps. Um, and that was taught by one of our community members, so we're grateful for that. Um, we also had Chinese calligraphy taught to students um, as well as children who came, and then also origami. Uh, in addition to supporting our culture and arts, we wanted to display a traditional Asian clothing. Um, so the these are from India, as well as um, ethnic minority Chinese clothing. Um, we had a whole variety of performances throughout Asia Fest. So we had about 11 different performers, um, all ranging from Korean pop to traditional Indian dance to um, break dancers to <laughs> Hawaiian um, well, Hawaiian dance uh, twice. So it was a really fun event, and um, students got to really showcase uh, their craft of dance. Um, but we also invited some other community members, um, such as the Champagne Urbana Chinese Folk Dance Club, um, the Good Hope Drum Team, to do more cultural performances. And these are just some pictures um, that really showcased, you know, the plethora of performances that we had that day. Um, and it was a fantastic day. The weather was beautiful and it all worked out. Um, we additionally had a photo booth um, that, you know, our guests were able to have fun with, really, um, you know, just trying to make an inclusive event where people can take away um, memories from that day. Uh, so Asia Fest this year, we had it for three hours, so we extended um, the actual event an additional hour from the past, and uh, we had an approximate attendance, about a thousand people, and so with that, we were able to um, really, you know, use the space outside of the Asian American Cultural Center, um, and with the tents from Harriet's, we were able to really transform the area, both outside and inside. Um, and we spent about 700 hours approximately uh, working on this event um, from for about a little under a year. Um, so we're going to continue on creating, um, you know, working on this event to make it bigger and better and um, offer more activities and performances so other guests can learn more about Asian and Asian American culture. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I had a question about yeah. the milk and the tea. Yeah. What kind of milk do you use? Um, it w you can actually use regular milk, like 2% milk. Um, so, um, you use coconut milk or something. Oh, well. I don't know why. But yeah, it's, you, any milk would, do, uh -huh. would work for Thai tea or even Thai coffee. But traditionally, you use just regular cow's milk? Um, yeah. <laughs> I learned something. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next grant presentation will be uh, from Josh Berkey of Parkland College. Welcome. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for letting me come and talk. My name is Josh Berkey. Um, I am the grants manager at Parkland College. And for this project, I, the Urbana Arts Funding um, was allowed us to do a collaborative painting um, activity with Parkland College students and Urbana High School students. 
this is somewhat of a, a unique situation for me as a, as a grants manager doing grants as my full-time job. Uh, typically, I'm not actually involved in the project, but having a background in painting as kind of a hobby painter, uh, this was an opportunity for me to kind of come forward with an idea and talk to our art department um, and kind of take up a passion of my own and help lead the project as well as um, do the kind of logistics with it as well. So that was a, a fun thing for me. So that's me as the facilitator, not only doing the grants aspect of it, but also kind of coming up with the idea. Um, and so the idea I had as a hobby painter, something having more of a background in music, um, something that was very common in music and in performance arts is collaboration. You don't have, you know, you have soloists, but you also have ensembles, and it's, it's a very common thing. When I started painting, it was surprising to me that this is not as common. I mean, the kind of art of a painter is individualism, and it's, that's kind of the historical background. Although there are collaborations within mural work and other kind of things, it's not as prevalent, um, especially not up until the last maybe 10 to 15 years. And so I did some of those things in my own spare time and thought, wow, this would be a fun thing if there was a way to help students and younger people do some collaborative painting together and have someone who actually has painting chops, which I do not, um, to, to push that forward. So um, I took this idea of collaborative art. I went to Joan Stoles, who's a faculty at Parkland College, and said, hey, I've got this idea. Would you be willing to kind of lead this with me and push it forward? And she was very excited, thankfully. Um, and so even though I kind of had the nugget of an idea of like I'd like to get students to paint collaboratively, she kind of ran with it and came up with the general, um, the broader scope of the project. So we went to, went to Parkland, she was in for it, we did it at Parkland, at the Parkland facilities, and we talked to Jill at Urbana High School and said, could you get students to be involved in this? And she said, absolutely, let's, you know, let's work and come up with times. And that's how the whole process started. So the general idea was what Joan kind of came up with was kind of small and large collaboration. So we had eight Parkland students and then eight Urbana High School students, and we paired them off into groups, they actually paired each other off into groups of two. Um, and so each, each pair of students had a, um, a section of this larger painting. And so what Joan kind of looked at was doing the idea of color saturation intensity. So each group would pick a color kind of palette and they would go into their individual section of the painting and they would explore kind of saturation and intensity techniques for those, those individual pieces of, of work. And at the end, the idea was that we would connect all eight pieces. We kind of had a plan going at the beginning mm -hmm. and we'd plant all connect all eight pieces together and try to connect them to make one large collaborative piece. So it was these kind of small collaborations and large collaborations on two different levels, which was a really fun idea to see how it would work out. Um, we joked throughout the process that I was just mostly interested in seeing how the students would collaborate with each other because that was what I came with it with, where she was much more interested in actually having a good piece of artwork <laughs> that would come out of it and wanted to be presentable and, and, and look good. So throughout the kind of process, um, we there was instruction that went on, the students paired really well. It was actually very surprising to me to see how well they worked together. We had some trepidation like, wow, if we get you know, eight high schoolers and eight college students, are they going to even talk to each other? We're going to have to kind of push them and, and organize them. And you know, sure enough, they got in there and they, they went to town after a little bit of guidance. They paired off real well and started working very quickly. Um, we also, I've got this little note here, we, this is part of the grant, we bought a whole bunch of food for them so they would actually come and stay for the, the sessions. And how we, just, how we designed it was to do these um, two three-hour sessions. We picked an evening during the fall, back-to-back um, -back weeks. I think it was a Wednesday night. We had three hours. We had them come to the Parkland Art Facilities. Um, and so they were there from, I think, five to eight. Um, we had you know, dinner as a break. And they just worked together for those eight hours. So throughout the process, Joan and Jill did instruction with them um, and kind of guided them because the, the spectrum of talent levels was very broad. And so, you know, some needed more guidance, some didn't. The Parkland students were able to help some of the um, Urbana students and even vice versa sometimes. And so there was a lot of wonderful collaboration even amongst the educational aspect um, as well as the actual designing their paintings. And so each group, it was fun to see each group kind of pick their stylistic, what colors they wanted, how they wanted to change the intensity, what shapes they used, were they more, you know, hard edge or soft edges. And the idea was it to be abstract. We didn't want, you know, very concrete scenes. We wanted this kind of abstract exploration of color to then merge together. Um, so in this process, they slowly started to reference each other's work. So they would look, they knew in the, the kind of this two paintings deep by four paintings wide where they would be at and connected to the other paintings that the other students were working on. So they would occasionally look at, you know, what was adjacent to them and try to connect and slowly do that as their own individual paintings. But then after the end of the first session, they actually all kind of put their paintings on the ground and started sketching out lines. And if you look at the picture on the left on the screen, 
that kind of shows some of that introductory. They're starting to sketch out lines. They're starting to show the colors and, and figure out where they're connecting in each individual painting. So then as the process gets going, the second session, which is another three-hour session, they kind of had everything sketched out. They had a plan. And this is kind of the tedious work of filling in all the colors, making sure all the, you know, everything looked good. They also started to push the paintings together and, and bringing them across the room with each other and saying, okay, you've got lines here, I've got lines here, how do we connect those? How do we bleed some colors over? Um, and doing that process. After that second session, we, we realized we still needed probably about an hour or two's worth of work. And so the college students actually came in the next week and just finished off the ideas. Everything was sketched, it was just kind of filling in the color and making sure everything was nice and filled in and vibrant um, so it was presentable. Um, for the exhibitions. So this is some pictures of them working. The top left is Joan going through some of the instruction and then just various, you can see the bottom right corners when they started to really get going and put their paintings together and figure out how they work. Um, and I will say this, it's just kind of a sidebar. It was very impressive with the size of the paintings and how much they did within just an eight hour period of time. It's, I mean, it was a lot of painting to do. They worked really quickly. They had to make quick decisions and work together. We didn't want to keep them there for multiple months and, and have them do tons of stuff. But for a, a quick project, it was really fascinating to see them work together and how they kind of attacked the problem. Um, so that's the oh, completed that's cool. work as it's put together, um, which we, again, we were really happy with how it turned out. It's very large. It fills up a, a good sized wall. Um, and again, after they kind of took their individual pieces together, they started kind of, you know, merging some ideas and concepts and making sure it kind of flowed as one complete piece, which again was the larger collaboration separate from their small collaborations at these individual groups, this kind of large 16 person strong collaboration was really neat to see it, it come out to that. So then as part of the grant, we wanted to do a couple exhibits in town. We first uh, went to the art coop um, and set that up so you can see there's, um, we, we took pictures of them working so the community could see that collaboration process because that was obviously a very large part of it. And then we also put the piece all together itself up. We had kind of talked about do we want to exhibit it as the eight separate pieces and then show a picture of it together, but to us the, the combined work was, was stunning in how big it was and it was mm -hmm. fun to, to have that put in one place. So then this is kind of my uh, pl uh, shameless plug for my kids who got to go, which they were <laughs> excited, excited to see it with their, with their friend to look at, which was also neat to see. Again, it's a big piece and so it was kind of, I think for little guys, was really interesting to be like, wow, that's a, that's a big piece of art. <laughs> for me, some of the takeaways of this, which were really interesting was, a, like I said, how easily the groups work together, how the collaboration was almost natural. And I, and I wonder in some degree if that's a symptom of, you know, generational shift. They, they seemed almost like this was natural, that they just kind of picked up brushes, started working with each other, talking, working through the problem. That kind of artistic group work, again, I thought it might be difficult to kind of convince them. But also maybe as young artists, they haven't been pushed into like this, this is your, you know, private, solitary, you know, work. Go find a, you know, hobble somewhere and, and put out your masterpiece. They were much more interested in, in that kind of collaborative spirit. And also, I think it was nice to see the Urbana students get a taste of Parkland as a facility and as an art school, because it is a very, I think, sometimes overlooked in the community because mm -hmm. it's, it's not as well known as U of I, but for some of these students, it was really interesting to see, like, wow, this is a big space, wow, there's really good instructors, and this is something in my own community that I can come to that services, you know, the whole Champaign-Urbana area. And then mm -hmm. also for the Parkland students to have that chance to work with high schoolers, to be leaders, um, to facilitate some of those processes was really fascinating to see how it worked out. And then just in general, to have the ability through this grant to showcase the talents of young artists in the area and a kind of rare painting um, genre was really, you know, in a greedy way for me, was fun to, to be able to put out there to show um, the community what that looks like and what's potential is w with amongst the students we have um, in Urbana and also to an extent in the larger community. Um, we also just uh, didn't have pictures of it. Unfortunately, I was running around with these little guys, so I didn't get a chance to take many pictures. But it's, it's currently at the Broadway Food Hall. Matt Cho was really wonderful. We were initially going to do it in Sipyard. It ended up being too big, so he let us move into the Broadway Food Hall. And I believe it's, it's going to be there somewhat indefinitely. So it's on one of the foyer entrance areas. It, it fits the space real well. Um, so it's there if you want to go check, take a look at it. And that was our second exhibition. We you know, had a whole, whole event there on a Friday night. Rachel um, presented and, and gave a talk. It was perfect. So. That is kind of the extent of it, and I'd be happy to answer questions if there are any. Thank you. I think it was a great project. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was really excited. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to thank our commissioners who came out for that reception, and I will let you know I do have photos from that reception. They're a little on the blurry side because, as I mentioned to Josh, I keep wanting to nudge the, the business owner to install some track lighting. That is a darker area <laughs> a dark of Broadway Food yeah. Hall, but it is absolutely beautiful. And I mentioned to Josh earlier that not only 
is this piece just seemingly so fitting for that room. It looks like mm -hmm. the room was built for it. Mm -hmm. um, but Nathan Westerman has um, designed the lamp that's in that room. The one lighting fixture that is in that room yeah. is, is yeah. really also an artistic piece. Yeah. And they actually really complement each other stylistically. <laughs> So it's just, it's really wonderful to see mm -hmm. both of them together. And I'll give you some of my somewhat blurry photos that I haven't <laughs> uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the next grant presentation will be from Charlotte Jones of Women Encouraging Sons. Hi. Hi. I'm Charlotte Jones, and I'm going to do more of a visual presentation today. Okay. I'm a singer, writer, play director, and a little bit of the works. <laughs> Okay, I would have let you see it on the screen and you can see it later because we're still finalizing the editing of the actual program on what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did mm -hmm. and how you afforded me to do a very, very nice event that affected not only Champaign and Urbana, but it also reached across to Chicago and as far as Milwaukee. Great. The Urbana Public Arts Program is very famous now, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Not to say that you were already famous, but because you are the first organization that I know of to give an award for a forgotten sector of our community, and that is minority males above the age of 21. No one seems to want to do anything for the arts once they're over the age of 21. My program reached out to those all the way as old as 35 and under. We tend to have a lot of programs that deal with minorities, uh, mostly female, and we never have anything for the males. And that's one of the reasons that we are plagued in the minority male sector of crime and everything. I found that using the arts is a good way to deter violence. We affected the community so much, guess what? The United States president decided to mention another program that was very similar to mine mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. And I know because I put my program, I did a live taping of it, and I thank Rachel and the public assets, they also filmed me, and there were others that were, they were viewing my program as far as Africa. So you have had thousands of people because sometimes they'll take my page and they'll share it to another page. So I don't have the actual total, but I know that a lot of people are talking about the minority males here in Urbana. We did a, a collaboration of some of the people playing drums, mostly the boys, because my program was geared targeting the boys, the young men and the boys. Mm -hmm. We had some of the speakers come and they spoke live while I did some of my music. So, one of the speakers just graduated from the University of Illinois. He got his doctor's degree, and his name is Dr. Vincent. Another speaker had experienced something that minority males hopefully won't experience, and I actually put a little bit of his voice on my new song, and you can see that, it will be uploaded next week. I will send the link to Rachel, mm -hmm. and he talks about those that are falsely accused and put into prison. So that was another thing that kind of helped the minority boys feel like we have someone that has experienced maybe trauma and poverty in the society and they're still doing something effective, something nice in the community. We had another speaker who had previously experienced getting into crime because he didn't have anything to do. So that was another reason why he was so encouraged and so elated about the program that the Urbana Public Arts Program reached out and all of those voices some of the things that they said is on a song that I wrote. Now, at the program, everyone loved the one that I have up right now. It's called I Remember. They're even talking about it on some of the TV. Some of the stars do actually know me. Some of the stars like uh, the Shy Lights, Marshall Thompson of the Shy Lights. Snoop Dogg actually got inspired by me to do gospel hip hop. <laughs> so I'm a friend of his friend, so he's also seen my program. So. The Urbana Public Arts Program is really, really encouraging a lot of people. Also, I went as far as Chicago to the Black Expo to uh, talk about and advertise about the program. And some of Farrakhan's, I don't know if some of you have heard of Farrakhan, they found out I was there, and guess what? They took a picture of me for the newspaper, and I was able to mention the Urbana Public Arts Program. Very good. I don't have Thank a copy you. of it, but I am going dying to get a copy <laughs> of it. And I will be going into the city probably in the next week or two, and I will be uploading 
a copy of that. I definitely need to get that. So today, this is what I'm going to do. I had a group of boys, too, and, oh, it turned out so nice. We had the place looking like a first-class restaurant on the inside. It took a lot of time and planning. I took one of the students from Parkland College. She's a singer. She helped me to advertise by singing, and I did a Facebook Live thing, and we advertised, as well as planned the seating arrangements. So I spent a lot of hours going around shopping for the cheapest amounts of things that would make it look expensive. It almost was like a wedding reception. We had it so beautiful with the balloons and everything, and it was so nice and elaborate. First class, everyone wore their suits, and I was the only one that was kind of hip hop with my hat. <laughs> <laughs> also, what I did was some, I had a group of boys in the audience. I made them uh, become some of my hosts. And hosts I had an engineer that came in, so I utilized all of the Urbana talent that never had a chance. Now, one of the, thing, the things that I usually do is I always grab someone from the audience. So what I would like to do right now, as I see my son, I'd like to grab this young man and this young man, if you don't mind. Just come up on the dance. <laughs> He's <with> like, you. what? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just something how they were here, because that's exactly what I did. In fact, the young man that, um, Rachel left with a friend and I had them come up in the front and we did a little dance and everything. So I'm just going to give you a little, just come up here for a second, I'm shy. Trust me, if I can sing and dance, you can, you can dance better than me. And just, all you got to do is step side to side, okay? Come on, come on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm a former school teacher, by the way, and I have like 20 years experience working, doing uh, dramatiz musical dramatizations with you. I've even had a play that was 100 youth in it, and I did it all by myself. <laughs> Come on, guys. Okay, now, what all I need you to do, <laughs> take your hands down. You just like my grand <laughs> Okay, now I need you to stand on this side over here. This is kind of how I did it for play, too. Could, if can you our stand artist, on this side, don't worry if you're a little shy. Can you now, introduce all you our artist, please? I'm all sorry. Right. I'll introduce them. Yes, yes, but we got to give you credits now. Now, I'm Evangelist Stradlett, and I'll say your name nice and loud. Cordell. Say it again. Cordell. And what's your last name? Lee. And how old are you? Eight. Very good. And what's your first and last name? Come on, let's let mommy, or auntie, or whatever she is. <laughs> mommy. <laughs> what's your first and last name? Kaye. Kaye. Oh, that's a nice name. What's your last name? Look at the camera. Don't be shy. <laughs> what's your last name? Reed. Reed. All right, let's give them an encouragement hand. Right I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go, guys. This is going to be fun. It's not a boring song. Now, this is not the speaker that I, I rented for the program, so it's not as loud, but it's loud. Uh -oh. oh, I can hear it. I can hear it. Okay. I'm telling you. Internet does work here, right? I tell you what, I'm gonna go to my YouTube and pull up one of those. We'll just dance to that one. Cause I got a gospel slag when it's going on. <laughs> you all know how to dance a little bit? You don't? You know how to move side to side, right? Okay, you can move side to side. We're gonna pull up my other one on YouTube. We're gonna do a gospel slag. One second, guys. I know this is just like live television. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll pull up the one that he recorded on here. I'm not hearing it. What's going on? All righty. Yeah. All righty, that's okay. We just have to do it this way. Come on. Clap your hands, everybody. And everybody just clap your hands. Clap your hands, everybody. And everybody just clap your hands. Now do like this. Come on, y'all. Everybody just clap your hands. 
Okay. Well, as a continuation of our discussion of arts and culture, I um, wanted to invite sort of an activity for all of us to do together today. And um, we sent out, uh, well, after the last meeting, there was the sharing of those two different culture planning toolkits and I want that to maybe frame a little bit of what we're thinking about. Of course we're going to go a little bit more in depth next month as well. But one of the things we wanted to kind of circle back to was the discussion of um, our mission statement and mission statements that can often be kind of guiding principles sort of how we think through and prioritize um, both how we're thinking of the arts and how we're thinking of culture. Um, but I wanted to begin with um, sharing a couple of um, kind of questions, uh, key questions that come out of mission statements normally. Um, the first is, of course, what do we do? How do we do it? Whom do we do it for? And what value are we bringing? Um, so this is an activity, and I'm going to actually walk you through a couple of different things. But first, I want to ask you, and I've got some paper and pens, to maybe jot down your initial ideas around what we do, how we do it, whom we do it for, and what value are we bringing. Um, so I'm going to pass out some paper and pens to everyone, and I'm going to invite you. And of course, I've got small pieces of paper. If you're invited, as most mission statements, to keep it brief. And jot down some answers. Do you want one? Oh, please. That's a very good question. Um, may, why don't we start with our current program, and then we'll think about how we adapt that when we think about our future. And the next bit of the activity will actually bring us through kind of envisioning the future, hopefully.
And you can really focus on some key words. Okay, you can continue to write, but I'm going to ask you to also look up every once in a while as I'm talking this next portion. So um, why don't we take a look real quick at our current mission and vision statement. I really do think of this as a mission statement and a vision statement below, the um, mission being the bolded font. So the Urbana Public Arts Program and Commission was established by the City Council in April of 2008 to foster a city where all residents may engage with the arts and where artists thrived and are valued. Um, this is, of course, a little bit amended. There is a dash and some information in it, and the information is where all resident artists and non-artists alike. Um, for the purposes of a lot of our pages, I've shortened that, um, which might actually indicate opportunities for us to think about condensing and getting straightforward sort of with our mission. Um, artists and non-artists alike kind of means everyone, right? And so we can kind of think through all of these things, but we as a current vision statement have um, really um, very thoroughly indicated how we define the arts, right? So we've talked about, and when you look down at our vision statement, we include music, theater, visual arts, dance, creative writing, film and video, crafts, performance arts, uh, spoken word, environmental arts, multimedia arts, architectural arts, landscape architecture, and emerging media. Um, and it's very powerful in the way that we name all of these, um, really identifying our inclusion of those um, pieces. So there's a lot of value, I think, in, in being deliberate and naming. Um, and there's value in being succinct in mission statements. And vision statements like the one that we have here allow us to go a little bit deeper. Um, so we can be thinking of those. But those initial questions that I asked you, so again, these questions of what do we do, how do we do it, whom do we do it for, and what value are we bringing, are ultimately the four questions that end up um, comprising a mission statement. Um, and we do like to say that mission statements are intended to be one to two sentences long and no more. Um, they should be easy to digest. So last month I shared with you a number of um, examples of um, different mission statements. So I'm going to actually circulate a few of these. Um, I'm giving them again to you to kind of help help identify keywords that you would like to see. So when we talk about keywords, um, I have bolded certain words here, but I, I want you to really think about the kinds of words that stick out for you. Um, and I'm going to pass these around. So you can have a paper version as well. And take your time to kind of look them over and see what is compelling or not compelling about them. Um, and then I'm going to ask a series of questions. I've thrown in some Urbana pictures to not be so text heavy. <laughs> yeah, the four questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'll continue to return to it because it's just the four questions at all. Mm -hmm. Well, you can sort of, yeah, think too and pass them down. And then you can kind of recirculate amongst yourselves to have some, take it your time in reading them. But these were pulled from the websites of a, a wide variety of cities with arts and culture programs. Um, and some you'll notice maybe focus more on the arts, and some have uh, maybe a language that includes culture more deliberately. Um, but we can look at what we value um, and what you as an individual value and what you'd like to see. Um, so I'm going to just skim through these um, mission statements and come to our first question that I'd like to ask you to reflect on. And that is what sentiments from these mission statements feel most important to you? So look over the ones that um, are being passed around. And I'm happy to put some more on the screen. But this is the first question I want you to write a response to. 
So what sentiments from these mission statements feel most important to you when you think of an arts and culture commission and why? Sure. Mm -hmm. And again, feel free to use keywords. You don't have to write full sentences. And this is about what we're aiming for, not what we're currently doing? Yep. Now, at this point, we're thinking about what we're aiming for for an arts and culture commission. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, let me clarify. So right now we're talking about this question. The questions I gave you at the beginning were just sort of a grounding for you to understand that this is these are kind of components of a mission statement. We're going to circle back to it. You don't have to worry about it right now. Okay. Would you like to see them up on the screen? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Does everyone get this question though? This, which sentiments are most important to you and why? So that's what we're focusing on now. Sure. They are on different pages, so I'll just start with the first one. No, it's fine, fine. Mm Let me know when you'd like me to page to the next one. Are there any from towns that are more relative to our size, or are they all from big cities? They're not all from big cities. Um, there was an assortment of towns of smaller than ours um, and big cities and everywhere in between. I tried to get a big cross-section. Um, so here's the other page. If it's helpful to also think about the things that are not compelling to me to you, you could also make note of those things. Sometimes it can be easier to determine what you want by saying what you don't want. <laughs> I'll flip. Last page. These ones are a little lengthy. <laughs> yeah. I would have to go get some, but yes, I can. I think there's only like two more here. Yeah. I don't mind gathering up any type of paper. I'm going to type it all up for you. <laughs> Or use the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 
I probably should have reserved these just for the last activity, but it's okay. Just keep taking notes. I'll type it all up. Um, feel free to keep typing or keep writing, excuse me. But one thing that I would like to invite you to do is turn to um, a person next to you or a group of three. If you <laughs> Actually, everybody's got a partner, so if you, you two can be a group. And really just try to sort of exchange ideas of what you wrote. Um, what are some of the things, sentiments again, that you find compelling? Um, and I want to just invite you to take some time to talk about that with the person next to you. So Barbara and Eric, you'll be a group, and Janelle and Brandon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're not presenting. Just feel free to talk to each other right now. Mm -hmm. So they, they took functional things and, and made art out of them. So a, a here, this was the one that really blew me away. This is the one. Yes, a, a, but it was, it's purposed as an art object. It's although it functions as a bus stop for Rosa Parks. Could there, could there be anything more appropriate than that? So, so one of the things that I put in here is to add art to functional spaces. Um, could be benches, uh, a bus, you know, a bus stop. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to invite you to um, maybe just sh share what we, sometimes we call this popcorn, and just sort of popcorn a couple of ideas that came up in your small group, and then we're going to move on to another question. So anyone want to go first? Um, representing your duo, your dyad, um, what were some of the things that came up that were sentiments that felt compelling to you? about developing a community identity or showcasing that identity, mm. um, but then ignoring the last half of that sentence um, and thinking more about if we create a place that is unique to us, then we don't have to think about bringing in tourism. People will already want to come in, mm. rather right. than thinking about bringing people in potentially at the expense of those who already live here. Mm -hmm. So lots of integrating arts into community life, um, and sustaining an identity. Just so I'm understanding, you're, ta you're pointing to the very last one that says provides leadership in developing community identity? Yeah, we just stole community identity out of that. Okay. And you said, but you didn't like the second but half of that. Community through the arts, yeah. Through the arts, period. Yep. Yeah, it's too big. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe in some cases people are trying to be so careful mm -hmm. and cautious to be inclusive that mm -hmm. sometimes that's probably where some of this wording comes from. Mm. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So that nobody feels like they're being shut out. Mm -hmm. I, I can see a lot of a um, lot of good in some some several of these. You know, taking the good from each one that would really be relevant for our city. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the sentiments that the, felt compelling in your group? Well, the citywide public arts programming that promotes public art. Mm -hmm. I, I like some of the direction that was going, mm -hmm. or, and even the one that, that was following it. Then there was one that was really succinct, and that was also quite good. Mm -hmm. The community access and celebrate cultural diversity. The, for, mm -hmm. You know, it was the city of Redmond. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they were saying that all just by the way they used their words. Yes. What about this last group? Mm -hmm. Yours are better. Well, mine are better. Okay. <laughs> uh, I like to promote participation in the arts because I feel like Urbana is a DIY community. It, it's the place where community groups get together and do all kinds of mm -hmm. fantastic things. So I would like to see us trying more to engage community members in the arts. Uh, showcasing our community as an, well, I paraphrase this, showcasing our community as an arts uh, destination, uh, I feel like that's just a part of Urbana development. And that also goes into the developing co community identity through the arts. That's, that's the same sort of thing. Uh, I like the broadest economic and social context possible because that addresses inclusivity and also maybe bringing together groups in the community that don't necessarily always have contact with each other or get to know each other. So, great. So there you go. Wonderful. Okay, well we're gonna move on to another question. So now pick one of the sentiments you wrote down, just one. You all came up with really wonderful ones. And describe in your, uh, in your view what it would look like. So what outcomes would you expect? And this is just for you individually to write on for a moment. Another way I suppose you could think of it is like, how would you judge success in that sentiment? Okay, pencils down, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> So I know you're not gonna have a lot of time, but I'm gonna invite you, um, and feel free to keep writing if you want to. This isn't actually a timed test. <laughs> um, but if, if you could pick one or two things that you wrote down, and we're gonna go through the line and everyone share. Um, can I get a volunteer to start? Anyone wanna kick us off? I'll go. Okay. Um, I don't know how it will look exactly because we're a formal organization, but I think making it less formal <laughs> mm. would, would be good. It's part of the reason why I think we're DIY here is because when there's a little bit of space, then there's room for, I don't want to say collaborations, I know that's sort of a, a pin word, but that sort of organic overlap happens. It's mm. like, oh, I need this, and you're really good at that, so let's make this work together, mm. rather than like, oh, we have this deadline, and we have these sort of formal processes to go through. Mm. I don't know how we would sort of make that applicable to us since we are trying to formalize things a little bit, but maybe having more of an ebb and flow mm -hmm. in that way. I hope that answers the question. Absolutely, I wrote it. I wrote down less formality, organic, free flowing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, pick a direction, Janelle, who's going next? This way. Okay, <laughs> Eric, you're going next. So the, the um, only idea that emerged in from my thinking and looking that might not have come up elsewhere is to put more art, apply art to functional spaces. Mm. So I found, for example, the greatest example of this, just blew me away, is 
a bus stop shelter, which is, uh, which is serving as a bus stop shelter, but it has a, um, uh, an artwork devoted to Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. What could be more, you know, fitting? Mm -hmm. But maybe if all the bus stop shelters in, in Urbana also had some uh, art, you know, component to them. Yeah. And uh, so just look for ways. I mean, our, uh, you know, our sculpture program is great, but they, and they complement the spaces that they are, but it's not quite the same as actually making the space also uh, an art object. Mm -hmm. So I think it would really be fun to look for that, to challenge, maybe to, to put that to our local artistic community that we would like to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. what, what can they propose? Build a better we do mouse have some of that. You know, we have the art in the buses, we have yeah. art on billboards. We, we yeah. have some of that. Yeah. We do have some of that, yeah. Okay, but there may be more. What I wrote down me. was um, that art and and sort of functional or utilitarian spaces yeah. are mm -hmm. inextricable from one mm -hmm. another. Find a way that the art would serve the community, mm -hmm. not just to look at, but be part of the mm -hmm. fun function. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. What about you, Barbara? Well, I I wrote down um, community enrichment, participation, collaboration, which is what you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, and support. Mm -hmm. Just those four. Wonderful. Overall. Okay. Big picture. Mm -hmm. Pat. Uh, well, this I'm, this was write, written as one of the as an outcome, but community members feel that the arts are a significant part of their lives. In other words, they're kind of aware that arts around them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. How about you, Jess? Um, so I wrote down integrate arts and culture into community life as the snippet that I chose. Mm -hmm. So I, an outcome of that I would see like. Um, a more engaged populace that supports the arts and views it as um, a really important part of everyday life mm -hmm. in their community, and just um, just be perceived in the general public like the the program as a a really good force for good and championing arts and culture. Mm -hmm. Force for good, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, yeah, so we have one win. last question for us all to. Oh, Brandon, you I'm so you sorry. This is what it's happens okay. when I volunteer. When, when we don't actually start in order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, mine, mine's similar to everyone else's, mm -hmm. but the, I really latched onto that community identity piece. Um, mm -hmm. So the sentiment was a community identity that celebrates cultural diversity through the arts. So success, I, much like several folks said, like um, that there's that sentiment um, of many folks who live here that. Um, arts is supposed to be a part of your everyday life. Uh, cultural expression should be a part of your daily life. And I really was kind of influenced by that idea. I think, or Janelle mentioned uh, the audiences. Um, it's like, it's not just that there's expression of art, but it's how it's received. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the identity too, that there's a mm -hmm. welcoming and a non-judgmental um, aspect to that. And that's, uh, that's a part of how we see ourselves in the community. Mm, that'd be success. I think I captured all of your sentiments, everyone. Um, and an idea of what outcomes look like. So lastly, um, you're invited tonight to take a stab or a swing at drafting a brief mission statement for arts and culture. This is an exercise. So what will happen is before you leave, please, if you are willing, give me your notes that you wrote down. And what I'm gonna do before our next monthly meeting is synthesize everything that I've heard this evening um, and come back with some ideas for you at the next monthly meeting of what something like vision statements and mission statements could look like for arts and culture program based on your ideas and what you were compelled by from other mission statements. Um, so keep it one to two sentences. You can, if you want, jot down um, vision things that you'd want included there, but mission statements are often pretty brief. So um, I think our, our previous one was blah, 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 founded in April of 2008. Our, um, we, well, let me just bring it up, hold on. 
we're all, we're I'm sorry, so fostering a city where all residents may engage with the arts and where artists thrive and are valued is our current mission statement. Mm -hmm. You can riff on that or you can write anew, but maybe come up with one or two sentences that feel compelling to you. Is, is this because we're now in the 10 year period and we're just re reviewing and wanting to refresh or has there been concerns that our mission statement needs a lot of tweaking or? No, this, this is, is just uh, an exploration. in line with our exploration of our, what arts and culture would mean to this mm -hmm. commission. If we, for instance, reshaped our commission to be an arts and culture commission versus a public arts commission, what would that look like? Would there be any changes needed? Yeah, I guess it's the defining, is this arts and culture mean the same thing to some people? In, in my mind, they're synonymous. Mm. Hmm. Right, in so some way. Kind yes of, and, no. and that's, I think, what we're going <laughs> to draw what, with these that's conversations. What I guess we're yeah. trying to figure out. Right. Mm -hmm. are, is there any, in, in my mind, in my heart, I guess there's no difference. Mm -hmm. But. If it needs to be defined, I guess that's yeah. what we're looking for. Yeah, and so I would take some of the sentiments that you pulled out and some of the language that you felt compelled by and think about how you might weave those things together, the things that you, inv and what makes it uniquely Urbana, I think, too. And you, you all talked a lot about that this evening already. Are there any questions? Now you look like you're thinking. Do you have a question? They, they want it to be one, one thing, right? Would there be room for it to be an umbrella, like arts and culture me means education and implementation, or arts, yeah. culture? How do we want it? Or is that what we're figuring out? That's what we're figuring out. Okay. So I think you can take it whatever direction you want to take it right now with the way right. you draft it. Mm -hmm. We want the culture. We want everyone to participate fully. We have to teach them how that looks, or yeah. what the options are, mm -hmm. give them places to practice it and to mm -hmm. do it right. Yeah. Because lots of the places people don't know. Mm -hmm. done quickly. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're the student with their pencil down right away. I've already got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> it actually is really to hard. Be succinct, yeah. It's hard to pull all those things together. So if you want to put some ellipses or something in there right now <laughs> or, you know, some parentheses that says maybe this is included, maybe not. If you want to make it four sentences because that's easier, you can.
<laughs> Just Urbana. <laughs> You said you're looking for synonyms for community? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. No. When everybody's ready. <laughs> or I could call pencils down. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's going to be down and wet soon. It's run out of lead. <laughs> if we start too early, those who are still writing might be influenced. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess when you're all done, look up. Oh, I'm done, but I'm rewriting this here so you have it on something. Yeah. Seem pretty ready. Are you somewhat ready? Okay, ready. no pressure. This is not our mission statement. We're just having an exercise and thinking th mm -hmm. through. But um, why don't we actually start with an end of the table? Can we start with you, Jess? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I wrote to provide opportunity for arts and culture to thrive in Urbana. Mm. Very good. I like the simplicity of it. <laughs> Well, mine's longer. <laughs> Go for it. Making Urbana an arts-rich, culturally inclusive place to live. I like to live, work, and visit mm -hmm. by providing resources and programs to artists and community members. Ooh, I like that one too. Okay. This is going to be hard when you get all this together to make the decision. That's the problem. <laughs> um, I came up with to sur serve to guide Urbana on all facets of art and cultural awareness, which are available for the co for community enrichment. Mm. I like that word, enrichment. Um, to reflect, foster, and celebrate the cultural and artistic diversity of Urbana. Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice Ooh. one. Why <laughs> don't I think he's got it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had Urbana Public Arts and Culture provides meaningful uh, pro programming or opportunities to activate, integrate, Activate and integrate cultural assets, artistic vigor, and identity into everyday Urbana life. Mm, that's really good. These are all wonderful. I have celebrating artistic and cultural expression in Urbana. Mm. Also nice to the point. <laughs> <laughs> These are all wonderful. I think this was wonderful. So what I'm going to do in preparation for next month is take all of your notes that you're willing to share and your mission statements. I'm going to find and locate some repeat words and things that seem compelling, and I'll take a stab at drafting some things for you to see and bringing some ideas forth both in what mission or vision could look like. And then next month, we're going to continue to have some conversations about um, the importance of how we define the arts and how we define culture. So that was a question that arose today. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I want to continue to press upon taking a look at those toolkits because we're going to really dive into that next month. Um, as I said before, the first one is an arts planning toolkit that was devised for the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. Really fantastic for us. And the second one actually comes from Canada, but it's a cultural planning to toolkit for cities and, um, and other organizations looking to really in invigorate the work that they do um, from a cultural standpoint. So I hope that we can kind of go deeper on those next month, but um, this was a wonderful exercise. And we'll see if our next month's discussion may also influence us thinking in, even again about this kind of exercise. So we hope that this will be kind of an ongoing scaffolded experience of thinking through these issues. And I appreciate you for your time and energy towards it tonight. Do we have a, a hard deadline? 
not done, but at some point we'll have to release that we are now with this. Mm. When, when does that happen? I'll default to Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking September or October would be nice if we could uh, accomplish it by then. I mean, we have a logistical challenge as well because, you know, stemming from the mission statement comes, you know, modifications to the programming. Plus, we already have to change up how the grants program is run to, um, to accommodate those, um, the special event funding. But we want to do that in the spirit of sort of the mission statement. So some of that will happen concurrently, but we have to implement that grant program. So that's kind of the big, the big so thing. Budgetary driven in some ways too. Yeah. Uh, well, it's more the timing for the, and the, the expectations Logistics. of our artists and, and our event organizers. Right. So we really want to have it out one. very early in 2019, which means staff has to have some you know answers um, yeah. before we move forward and we have to allow for some time because if we modify the commission right the mission is in the ordinance that that um, established the body so that has to go to council so that's yeah. that's what we're preparing for now is is building consensus to you know make make that change and then everything else sort of flows from that so mm. okay. a lot to do yep well maybe it's just a matter of amending it so we're not re reinventing the wheel. We're just polishing it, hopefully. Any other questions or comments, I suppose? As we, especially as we continue this conversation next month. Any things you'd like particularly for me to bring with next month or ideas that you'd like to make sure are discussed? Have you thought about putting all of the words um, as you synthesize all of our comments have you thought about putting it into like a word cloud uh, like a wordle or something yeah or a word cloud? yeah I can do that I'm uh, happy to do that I'm a and visual you can see which learner. words really yeah. pop up yeah. and are used over and over again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. arts maybe <laughs> yeah. front and center culture, culture. Yeah. <laughs> urbana <laughs> but yeah I'd love to do that any other questions or comments just I, I do believe that uh, short is is better Mm -hmm. this is yes. What, this is what politicians know. If you're, uh, if you've given a reporter your best soundbite, stop talking, mm -hmm. because you don't want them to quote yeah. your second best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very wise. All right. Well, thank you all for your time. Okay. Thank you. I suppose it becomes our branding. In some way. Mm -hmm. so it's, yes. It's remembering a way of people thinking about Urbana. Yeah. And it becomes advertising for the city. As right, well. right. Yeah. Oh, did anybody have any announcements oh, they want to make before we <laughs> adjourn? Okay. Uh, I move we adjourn. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, we're done. Thank you. Thank you.